Sadaka za sifa kwa kobana Shimba na mamlaka zipoke Katifu mtakatifu Hakuita mtakatifu Oh yes Wewe mtakatifu Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. And praise the name of Jesus. I'm glad you can join us today and I'm thankful to God for this opportunity to, to interact with you through this medium. Good afternoon and how are you? Glad you could join us this Saturday for another weekly edition of Hope for Tomorrow. I am your host, Pastor Steve Kegwa. If you would be so kind enough to let me know that you can hear me and where you're watching us from, I would be happy to know that you are with me. 
and I will be ready to begin any time because I don't know whom to wait for. I didn't have anybody telling me they will be coming on board, so I will just start anyhow. And um, I would like I would like to ask you to do me a favor. Uh, if you can create a watch party and invite your friends to watch along with you, I'm sure they will be grateful and glad to you and happy and thankful to you for inviting them to watch with you on something that can be and will be a blessing to their lives. So I will ask you, if you don't mind, if you can create a watch party for me or for yourself as well and invite your friends to watch along with you, that will be so kind of you. I appreciate it. And I am thankful that you could join us. Please let me know where you're watching us from. Invite your friends. You can share this broadcast on your social media platform. And let other people be blessed as you. I think I'm good to go. I will not waste a lot of time today. I just want to have a little conversation. And I will let you go into the other schedules of the day that you have planned for yourself. But before I get into what I want to talk to you about, I just want to say, a simple short prayer to the Lord to help us go through this session together. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to share what you have laid in my heart. I pray for every listener and every viewer who will watch today or even afterwards that you will speak to them. Anoint my lips and put your message on my mouth today. Let it lift somebody and guide somebody in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. All right. I intend today not to be long, and I know sometimes I say I don't intend to be long, and I end up being long, but today I am going to be conscious to make sure that I don't keep you for long. I just want to ask you a question. In fact, the topic of our discussion for today is actually a question that I put across if, you had, uh, if you'd come across the e-post that we were circulating on the social media platform. In my message title, or rather just what I want to communicate to you today is on something, on a question I am asking, and I'm, I want you to imagine that I am sitting across your couch in your living room and I'm asking you this question. You may not be able to give me an answer right now, but I want you to think into your heart what answer you would give if I was seated across. And this is not going to be one of those easy questions to answer. It's a difficult question for many people. And the topic of our discussion, which is in form of a question, is what are you on? What path are you on? What path are you on? It's a question, and it is not an easy question. It is a tough question. There is something I've come to learn in the few years that I have been in my excursion through life. I have come to learn that life is a series of searches for answers to the questions that we ask ourselves. And until you learn and begin to ask yourself tough questions, you will never be able to find answers to questions that you are not asking in the first place. I have also come to learn that the world as we know it today is the way it is because of men and women who are seeking for answers to the questions that other people were asking. And I have posed a question to you that I would like you to begin to think through in your heart, in your mind, to pour on it, to meditate on it, and to think seriously on the question, what path are you on? What path are you on? And I want to begin by saying to you today, the point at which you are in in life, it doesn't matter whether we are talking about your business or career or ministry or in terms of your relationship with your significant other people, your marriage, your business, whatever it is, your health, every dimension and aspect of your life, you are the way you are today and you are the place where you are today, whether you are excelling or you are stuck whether you are frustrated or whether you are happy, whether you are disappointed and whether or whether you are excited. You are the point at where you are right now in life because of the path that you took at some point in life. You took a path somewhere in life and that path is one that has led you to the point where you are now. If you are happy today, it's because you took on a path that has led you to where the happiness you have today is. If you I'm not happy and you're not satisfied in life and you are not feeling fulfilled in life, it's also 
obvious that you took a certain path in life that has led you to the point where you are at right now in life that makes you feel unhappy and unfulfilled. And that begs the, the answer, the question I'm asking begs the answer. And you must be the person who can only sit down. You're the only person who can sit down and begin to ask yourself that question. What path am I on? What path did I take? What path am I on right now? It's a question that you need to answer yourself to be able to know exactly where you are. Now, that lead them in the wrong direction. And for your information, allow me to mention to you that there are different kinds of paths in life. There are different kinds of path in life. Now, when I talk about path in our generation today or in the modern times we live in, it might be a little not so clear. It might be a little for me because days we went from Asia, you walk on foot or you had to ride a donkey or ride on a horse. But today, well, tarmac roads or maram roads. So we are not talking about those all those could also be used as a reference or as a, a figure of speech in what we are talking about. But I am talking about today the direction that you have taken, decisions that you have made, choices, ideologies that you subscribe to, association that you took yourself in. That's the kind of path that I am referencing to today when I'm talking to you by asking you that path are you on? And it is a very important question. Allow me to read you a scripture that I find very relevant to what I'm talking about to you today. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs ch chapter 14, and I'll be very fast, very quick, I'll be on listening. I'm upping mine on speaking because I want to be out of here soon. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. This is what my Bible says. My Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man. In fact, other translation, let me read for you another translation. Another translation of the Bible, which we call ISV translation, it says, there is a path that seems right to a man, but the end it's a road, but it is, but in the end it's a road. Let me read that one more time. There is a path that seems but in the end it's a road to death. There is may seem right to a man, and when we talk about men referring to the male, we are talking about both men and women. There is a path that may seem right to somebody's eyes, but it will lead to destruction. And many people have taken paths in their life. They were doing their evaluation. They thought they were headed in the right direction. But they ended up in destruction. That tells you there are different kinds of paths. There is a path that leads to life. There are paths that lead to destruction. There are paths to do with what kind of path are you on today? Are you going towards destruction or are you going towards life? It's unfortunate though, even those human beings are the most intelligent beings that we have on the planet. It's unfortunate that sometimes human beings make decisions and they decide to walk down different routes and they decide to do certain things. And because they made an intelligent evaluation to follow that path, somewhere, somewhere down the road, they come to discover that they actually took on the wrong path. But because of the ego of a man, and when I say man again, I am I'm not referring to the male gender, I'm referring to both men and women. But because of the ego, in the sense that you don't want to be seen as if you're foolish, or you did not make your judgment properly to decide to walk on that path, then you find someone going on in the wrong direction, in the wrong even though deep down in their hearts they know they are doing wrong, even though they know they are walking in the wrong direction foolish consistence you just want to be consistent but you want to be consistent on the wrong things because you made up a decision because you decided to take on a certain route but you want because you don't want to look foolish in the eyes of your friends 
important in your life. Two of the wrong I call that foolish existence. And many people do that. Many people do that. But my Bible wise man changes his mind. A wise man or a wise woman is a man or a woman who can look, sit down and begin to ask themselves questions and begin to ponder within their heart and begin to ask themselves, did I take the wrong route? Am I on the right path? Did I did I take on the right job? Did I pursue the right business? Did I, did, did I involve myself with associations that are leading me to life? Or did I engage myself into associations that are leading me to destruction? A wise man will evaluate that question in their heart and they make a judgment based on the result and based on their life and make a decision of either turning back or foolishly continue on the wrong path that will lead them to destruction. But a wise man, the Bible says, will change his mind. How many people today go or find themselves destroyed or find themselves losing their business, burning all their hard-earned cash or losing their relationship, their marriages because of taking a wrong path and because they don't want to be viewed as if they are not wise or as if they are not intelligent. They pursue the wrong path. They end up losing their children, losing their wives, losing their business, losing their career, losing everything that has taken them years to build. But I came today to ask you this question because sometimes it is important to sit down by yourself and begin to ask yourself questions tough questions. In fact, until you learn how to ask questions to yourself, you may never have answers in life to things that maybe still puzzle you. Now, I want to submit to you today, and I, like I said, I want to be very fast, and, and, and I won't keep you long. But allow me to say this to you. You are today somewhere, doesn't matter where it is, it doesn't matter what dimension of life, because you can look at your life from all kinds of sphere, from di different dimensions. You can look at yourself from your career perspective, from your relationship perspective, from your business perspective, every dimension and aspect, from your spiritual spirituality perspective, from your perspective, social perspective. Where are you right now? How is your health? How happy are you? Is it well with you? Is your relationship with your significant other person happy? Is it fulfilling? Are you happy? Did you take on the right path? Did you take on the right path? I'm sure you took on the right path in what you are doing. Just the same way that I say that where you are today is because you you came there or you came to the point where you are at in life because you took a certain path. As surely as that is true, it is also true that five years or two years or one year or several months down the road from today or ten years, two decades from today, you are going to still find yourself in a place you are going to find yourself in a certain destination. The question that I think you really need to think about is, but where, where do I, where will I find myself two years, one year from today, five years from today, 10 years from today, three months down the road, where will you find yourself? Because the path that you have taken is the one that is going your destination is not determined by how fast you travel your destination is first and foremost determined by the path that you have taken your path is what determines the destination the destination is determined by the path that you take and you can only be very unwise not to be thinking about the destination that you are headed to, that you are going. You are today going somewhere, whether you are conscious about it or not. Even for, for heaven's sake, even if you thought that perhaps you are doing nothing and going nowhere, the fact that you have made a decision of not making one decision or not even thinking about where your life is taking you, that is a decision by itself. And obviously, it will lead you somewhere. Now, the question is, where? Five years, ten years, two decades from today, you will arrive 
life somewhere. But the question that you must ask yourself honestly and sincerely and get the answer to that question is, where will the path I have taken today take me and lead me five years and ten years from today? Where will it lead me? Where am I going? The path that you have taken of being immobile, not exercising, not eating the right way, doing things the way you do them, oversleeping or not sleeping at all. That's a path you have taken and it's going to lead you somewhere. It's going to take you to a place. The path you have taken of not trying to, to build relationships with people, not trying to reconcile with people, of not forgiving people, carrying bitterness on yourself. That's the path you have taken. It's going to lead you somewhere some someday, some one year, two years, some three years. Whatever it is that you do and you've been doing, it's leading you somewhere. It's a path that you have taken. The way you treat clients and customers in your business or in your business, it's a path that you have taken and it is going to take you somewhere. Is it going to lead you to a place where you promoted or is it going to lead you to a place where people and the people in the organization want to downsize the first person who crossed their mind is the person who has taken the wrong path. The path you have taken is leading you somewhere day by day. For sure you are going somewhere. Now, here is what the Bible says. I want, to, I want to read for you a couple of verses and I'll let you go and enjoy your weekend. But before I read you, I'll read you several verses in the Bible. But I want to mention something that I think is very, very, I think it's a very important question and I would like you to pause and think to yourself. Now, the path that you have taken is either leading you upward or is taking you downward. There is nothing in between. You are either going up or you are going down. There is no time you will remain the same. You are either going up or you are going down. You are either progressing or you are retrogressing. You are either headed for life or for destruction. There is nothing in between. And sometimes we try to kid ourselves and fool ourselves that we are somewhere in a gray area. There is nothing like a gray area. You are getting better or you are getting worse. You are going up or you are going down. You are headed towards more life or toward destruction. You are headed toward progress or retrogression. In fact, you are headed towards life or death. You are headed towards heaven or hell. And you are headed right now towards heaven or hell. Which path are you on? What path are you on? What path did you take? Are you willing to reconsider your ways and begin to think to yourself and begin to ask yourself, wait a minute, how long do I want to live? I am 50 years now, or I am 60, or I am 30, I am 20, I don't know. Are you willing to reconsider and begin to ask yourself, wait a minute, I am 30 years today. I want to live up to the time I'm 80 or 90 or whatever. God giving me strength. But is what I am doing with my body, with what I am eating going to help Help my body to thrive, to carry my dreams and idea. Because this body is the only person that you have to live in. It is the only cage you have to live on the planet. What are you doing? What path do you concerning this shell that we call you? Although it is not you. But we call it you. But trust me, when you go, we will not even want to come close to it. You will say it is a dead body. But what path did you take? The path... You've taken the way you talk to your children and to your wife or husband. Is that the path that is going to lead to you having a fulfilling relationship? Is the path you have taken on how you respond and how you ask questions and how you talk and interact, how you treat each other, is that the path that is going to give you, to yield to you more happiness, more joy, and more fulfillment? It's just a question I'm asking for somebody. I'm asking for a friend. What path did you take? What path have you taken today? Are you sure that today if you went to sleep tonight and never woke up again any other time, you never woke up from this body, in this body again, are you sure that you would wake up in the presence of God or would you end up in destruction? 
I use what path did you take? I think my job today is simply to ask you the question and to impress upon you that you seriously do need to rethink on the kind of path that you have taken regarding every dimension and every aspect of your life to see whether you are holding on to the truth or you got misled and you took the wrong path because of company and association, because of how you wanted to portray yourself in the eyes of other people, because of what you wanted people to think about you. you may have taken a wrong path. The Bible says where we are afraid. There is a path. That's Proverbs 14 verse 12. There is a path that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to destruction. You can take a path today thinking that you are taking the right path, but you find, and I know so many people who took on a path and they thought it was the right path, but it led them to destruction. It led them to death. It led them to losses. It led them to pain. It led them to failure. But they were taking the right decision. They thought they were on the right path. Are you on the right path? I want to read for you a couple of verses and I will let you go like I promised. I don't want to keep you here for long. Now, my Bible says, and I want to read you a couple of verses. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 8, Lord, O oh Lord, lead me in your righteousness because of my enemies. Take your path straight before me. If there is anything that you really need and something that you must always ask God to help you do is to ask God to make his path straight for you because there are many crooked paths. There are many crooked paths and there are also other many paths that looks like they are wonderful. There are wide paths that are beckoning people to walk through them. Many people want to walk down the path called the path of least resistance. They want to go through the path where a majority are going. But this is not always the right path. The majority might be going the wrong direction. But if you can tell the Lord, like David was praying and say, Lord, lead me in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your path straight straight before me. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 16 verse 11, you cause me to know the path of life. It is God who causes us to know the path of life. If there is the path of life, it also means there is the path of death. You must ask yourself, are you on the path of life or are you on the path of death? But it is God who causes us to know the path of life. In your presence is your is joyful abundance. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, this is what the Bible says in Psalm 17 verse 5. Because my steps have held fast to your paths. My footsteps have not faltered. You can only step firmly. When you have been walking on the paths that Lord has led you. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 23 verse 3. He revives my life. He leads me in pathways that are righteous for the sake of his name. For the sake of his name, the Lord. That means if you are submitted to God, the Lord will cause you to walk in pathways that are righteous. Psalm is the psalm pr prayed also in Psalms 25 verse 4. Cause me to understand your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. I believe this is one of the most powerful prayer that you can make to God. Ask you the paths to take. To paths to take. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 25 verse 10, All the paths of the Lord lead to gracious love and truth for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. In the book of Psalms 25 verse 12, the Bible says, Who is the man who fears the Lord? God will teach him the path he should choose. That means you are be required in life at some point in your life to make a decision. And that's why I say the path we are talking about is not a literal path like a highway. It's about the choices and the decisions that we make. It's what we choose to do or not to do. It's what we choose to engage ourselves in. It's what we choose to get on to. That is what I'm talking about. And the Bible says that God will teach him the path he should choose. If you're a man or a woman that fears God, God will teach you the path that you should choose. If you're a man who fears God. In Psalms 27 verse 11, the Bible says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level. 
because of my enemies. Your enemies are waiting and watching for you to stand that is not level so that they can topple you, so that they can ensnare you, so that they can trap you. And woe unto you if you fall into the hands of the enemy. But be like the psalmist who prayed, Lord, teach me, teach me your path. Bible says in the book of Psalms 32 verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you concerning the path you should walk. That means there is a specific path that you should walk in everything that you do in life. There is a specific path for prosperity for you. You don't do just deals and be corrupt and bribe like happy. You'd rather live simple and happy life knowing that you are pleasing God and you are glorifying God in the simple manner in which you live than to be living big to try and impress people and you have done dubious deals. That's what the Bible says. He'll teach you concerning the path that you should take. The Bible says the Bible says in the book of Psalms uh, Psalm 78 no, sorry, Psalms, Psalms 85, verse 13, the Bible says, Righteousness will go before him to prepare a path for his steps. Psalms 119, verse 14, the Bible says, I find joy in the path of your You need to have and find joy in following the decrees and the mandates and the dictates from God's word. The Bible, uh, in the book of Psalms 119 verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. The word of God is what illuminates. That means in every decision that you make, in every choice that you want to, to take in life, your word, the word of God should saturate your heart and your mind to illuminate your path, to illuminate your thoughts, to expose every form of cloudness and every form of confusion and darkness because it's the word of God that gives us light. And let me show you something that I will... Think of this is where I will add with. Uh, I, I want to read for you Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3 verse, verse 6. But let me begin from verse 5. Uh, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3 verse, verse 5. And, uh, but my interest is in verse 6. The Bible says in Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 it says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Now, to trust is what God has called upon us to do if we, tr if we believe in him. If we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus, if we proclaim Christ as our Lord and Savior, to trust is what God has called us to do. And to trust means to rely on, to rely on, or to rely upon. To trust also means to rest assured. And you can never rest assured of something until you get to know the integrity of the person who is telling you to rely on them, to rely on your word. If you have ever dealt with someone who gave you a word on something, they told you they would do A, B, C, D, or they told you they would give you something, but they did not do, you may have questions on the integrity or because of what they have done. But as far as God is concerned, there is no question on his integrity at all. His integrity is not in question. The Bible says that he is a faithful God, a keeper of promise. He is faithful even when we are not faithful ourselves. He is true to his word. And when he says that trust in the Lord, that means we should trust him. We should rely upon the integrity of his word. Because we know the nature and the character of God is that God cannot lie. If he said it, he will do it. If he promised it, he will give it to you. Then you can rest assured. Then the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not some bit of your heart. It is with all your heart. Own understanding. 
I like another translation that says, and lean, do not look to your own senses for support. Now, this is where we go wrong. We try to evaluate things and try to analyze things and we think we can do things, even trusting God. By the way, we are limited in receiving from God, not because God cannot do it. Now, God is not willing to do it, but we are limited in what we receive from God based on how we have conceived God to be. We have conceived God in a Certain way. We have idealized God in a certain way in our thinking, in our beliefs, and our beliefs concerning God and who He is, how He acts, how He operates, how He relates with people. The kind of perception that we have about God is what He does us from receiving from God. That's why the Bible challenges us trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your heart, and do not look to your own senses. Your own senses, your own way of perceiving things, your intelligence, you know, your evaluation, your analysis, your experience, you know, your knowledge, all those things, your life lessons, all those things. Don't look to your own senses for, for support. Verse 6, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. In all your ways. Acknowledge God, not in some ways. Now, God should not be hearing from people what you are doing. Well, that sounds funny, yes, because, of course, God is not all-knowing. He knows everything. But what I mean is, I mean, you shouldn't be doing something that you haven't had a conversation with God, that have not told God, that you haven't acknowledged God in, that God should be hearing from someone else saying, oh, Lord, help so-and-so. They got stuck in some problem. And God did not know, of course, that he didn't know. I, I'm just using that as a figure of speech because God knows everything. But what I'm saying is, in everything that you do, you should be acknowledging God. You should be inviting God. You should be checking out from his word what he says concerning what you are doing. And when you do that, he will make your paths straight. <laughs> You know, sometimes we think we can hide things from God and that's how we actually end up in the wrong paths. And that's why this message is, what path are you on? Let me give you a little story and I'll be out of here. It's a story I'll give you. It's a true story. It's a story about me. When I was a young boy, not really a young boy as you know, I was young as such, but you know, I was a, little, a lot younger than I am. And I'm not saying that I'm old in any way. But, <laughs> but, but I was a lot younger than I am. And uh, it was in the early 2000, and uh, I was running a small business somewhere on, on River Road. And what was I doing there? I was doing graphic designing on River Road. In fact, I had rehabilitated a toilet on River Road uh, at the junction of, I think, uh, what is the name of that building? It was somewhere at the junction of River Road and Ronan. I rehabilitated an old toilet. In fact, I was the first guy to rehabilitate a toilet in the city. Of my before the city council stole, stole my idea and started rehabilitating toilets. Anyway, I'd rehabilitated a toilet in a node building and I had made an office and in that office I was doing graphic designing work there. And uh, one day I was sitting in there, my brother came to see me and we were having a conversation. My own blood brother, my whoop mate from, my, from the same mother, from the same father. So he came to see me and we were having a conversation. While he was there, a man came... Uh, to see me because he wanted me to do business with him and uh, he came and uh, he told me many things I did not know he was a con man at that time I came to discover he was a con man much later when he left but anyway the story to cut the long story what I want to give you the story the story the bit of the story that I am trying to relate to you to understand what I'm talking about in reference to what we are discussing today is that when I realized that this man who had come to see me uh, had a serious business preposition for me to do graphic designing and uh, typesetting work for an NGO at that time and uh, we did and saw that I was to make like a like a, a half a million in a month and it was going to go on for 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 six months and I was quickly doing the math you know as a young man I was excited and when I saw how serious the deal was I told my brother and hey, brother Abu excuse ourselves uh, excuse us we need to talk serious business and of course, my brother went away and I sat down with the man and he talked. Later, I was conned. I was conned. And later, I was thinking to myself, supposing I had not asked my brother to, to excuse it, to excuse it. Supposing I asked him, just sit here, listen to our conversation. Maybe he would have had something in that conversation and he told me, hey, bro, I, I smell a rat there. 
Why am I giving you this story? I'm giving you this story because sometimes we take on paths in life we don't want other people to know about. We say, oh, well, I don't even want other people to know. I, this deal must cook. It in lazima eve. And I don't want other people to steal it. And you get involved in dubious things only later to regret and to cry. Always acknowledge God in the things that you are doing. And when you do that, God has said in his word, he has obligated himself to make paths, your paths straight. He has obligated himself to make your paths straight. Let me read one more scripture for you. And I think we'll be done. The Bible says in Proverbs 9 verse 6, Leave your naive ways. Wow, I think I love that Bible. Leave your naive ways. And leave, walk in the paths of understanding. Don't be naive. Walk in understanding. Don't, don't just walk. Don't just do things. Do things with an understanding. Where are you headed? Where is it going to take you? Proverbs 10 17, Whoever heeds correction is on the pathway to life. This is one way to know if you're on pathway to life. If you're seeking life and you're seeking enlargement and you're seeking living well, you're seeking happiness, fulfillment, joy, peace, and good for yourself, for your family, and for others. If someone corrects you, you will take correction. But people who are on their path towards destruction, they don't even take correction at all. They take offense. They cannot be corrected. They are no at all. They know everything cannot be corrected. Why? Because they're on the wrong path. And you're wondering, why do you think you're the one who can correct me? The Bible says in Proverbs 12, verse 28, In the pathway to righteousness, there is life. And in that lifestyle, there is no death. In the lifestyle of walking in righteousness, seeking righteousness in everything that you do, it will always lead to life, and it will lead not to death. Remember the scripture I read for you today, Ali. Proverbs 14, 12, which was my main scripture. And that's what I want to leave you with again. Proverbs 14, 12, there is a path that seems right to a man, but in the end, it's a road to death. And the question I began asking is the same question I want to close by asking you the same question. What path are you on? Are you headed towards destruction? Are you headed towards life? The path you are in right now where you are in life now is because you took on a certain path. Your relationship is the way it is today because you took on a certain path. Your business is the way it is. Besides COVID and all these things, it is the way it has been because of the path that you took. Your health is the way it is because of the path that you took. And right now you're on a path somewhere. Now the question is, where are you going to be three months, six months, one year, three years, five years, a decade, two decades down the road? You are either going up or you are going down. You are either retrogressing or you are progressing. You are either headed to death or to life. Now you need to ask yourself that question again. And ask yourself, what path am I on? If I slept tonight and never woke up, where would I spend eternity? A wise man changes his mind. Don't do what I say some people do. Foolish consistency. Just because you want to prove a point and you want to be seen as a macho man and you are afraid of looking stupid and foolish because of the path you took. A wise man changes his mind. If you realize today that you took on the wrong path, the best you can do for yourself is to take a turn around is to make an about turn. And that's what repentance is about. Repentance is you are going this direction and you turn about and you say, no, I will not head that direction anymore. Let me go back in the right way. If you've been running away from God, you've been doing things away from God, you've not been involving God in what you do, the best thing you can do yourself is to take the right path and go back to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. I took on the wrong path. I thought I was headed in the right direction, but I took the wrong move. Forgive me. Help me. I want to walk in your ways. Lead me in your level path. Teach me your word. Teach me your counsel. Teach me your ways. And the Lord will be more than glad to receive you. Allow me to pray as I close. Father, I thank you for the opportunity we have had just to share this word today together with the viewer and those who have listened to me and those that will listen even afterwards. And I pray that you will speak to them. Let there be life 
in these words. I pray that your power and your anointing will accompany these words, that it will prick their hearts and it will cause an awareness and will light up their hearts and their lives to rethink on the path that they have taken and choose to take on the path that leads to life, the path of righteousness. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with me this afternoon. I appreciate your company. I want to wish you a fantastic weekend. Please create a watch party. Invite your friends to watch with you. You can also share this broadcast on your social media platform. I hope to see you next week on the same time, same place for another episode of Hope for Tomorrow with me, your host, Pastor Steve Kewa. Now, this live broadcast we also will also be uploaded on YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel. I know there are some people who ask me, do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, you can go to Stephen Kewa. You can watch it also on YouTube. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great weekend ahead.